Today on CityCast Philly, the results are in. Sherelle Parker will be Philly's 100th mayor. When they tell you that it won't work, I want you to listen. Be patient and listen. But once they're finished, this is what I want you to say. Don't throw shade on my Philly shine. We're talking about the winners of Philly's general election. Lead producer Laura Benchoff and producer Abby Fritz are joining me to break down the other winners, upsets, voter turnout, and why this all matters. It's Wednesday, November 8th. I'm Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Abby. Good morning, Trinae. Good morning. It's very early, (laughs) (laughs) y'all. Correct. Uh, But as of 5 o'clock this morning, 96% of divisions have reported results. Laura, you spoke with City Hall reporter Sean Collins-Walsh from the Philadelphia Inquirer this week about how the city largely skews Democratic. Yeah, that's right. And that's going to shape a lot of what we talk about today. If you look at voter registration in the city, which anybody can look up if you go to the Pennsylvania Department of State website, as of this Monday, there were about 778,000 registered Democrats in Philadelphia, compared to about 116,000 registered Republicans. That means that for every one Republican, there were nearly seven Democrats in the city. So some of yesterday's races were not very competitive. The real race was during the primary. And the voter turnout kind of reflected that, you know, according to the Philadelphia city commissioners, less than One in three registered city voters actually went to the polls. Wow. So let's talk about the results as we know it. This was the race of the year, the mayor's race of Philadelphia. And it was called pretty early, like before 9 p.m. last night. Sherelle Parker will be Philly's 100th mayor. And this is historic because she will be the first woman mayor for Philadelphia and the first black woman to win this seat. Did this surprise y'all? Not really. No. What about you, Abby? (laughs) No, I think the, like you mentioned earlier, Laura, the the primaries were a little more interesting. And I think we all could safely have guessed that Parker was going to pull through. Definitely. And similarly to what Laura was saying, just about the registration of uh, Democrats and Republicans in the city, political reporters have told us for weeks and months now that, Mm -hmm. you know, it was going to largely skew uh, for Parker. Mm -hmm. What I really appreciated in this uh, election cycle is the respect and professionalism that David O presented last night. He did succeed the the race. And here's what he had to say. The voters has spoken and uh, Sherelle Parker is the 100th mayor of uh, Philadelphia. So I congratulate her. I wish her well. Uh, it is her responsibility now and we will all support her uh, to make her the most successful mayor that this city has seen because that's what's in the public interest. So, I yeah, so I really, again, want to just shout that out because it feels good as a citizen to hear, you know, that she's going to, that Parker's going to get support. And, you know, they may not have saw eye to eye on some policies and, and you know, things like that. But it sounds like from what he said, he's going to support her. So that's great. Yeah. Sherelle talked a lot about her village and her background. Right. And. She had been in politics for a really long time. She's a former city council member. Before that, she served in the state legislator representing Philly and Harrisburg for 10 years. And this isn't her first time making history, actually. In 2005, she became the youngest Black woman ever elected to the Pennsylvania General Assembly. She ran for mayor, promising to hire more police officers, clean up trash in neighborhood. She talked about that Mm -hmm. in her speech last night. Um, And she also talked and was very, very heavy on the year round schooling and just providing resources for children in the morning, in the afternoon and at night. 
to help families. She had also support from uh, many established Democratic politicians. They were all surrounded her on the stage last night. And she also gave a shout out to the building trade unions, which um, we saw helped push her campaign forward in the primaries. So Mm -hmm. she will replace our current mayor, Jim Kenney, who is leaving office. And Kenney has been in office since 2016 as our mayor. But because of the law, he can't run for more than two terms. Now, the city council races were also really important in the city because they are the legislative branch in Philly. They pass the laws that run the city. And Laura, can you tell us who won in these races? Yeah. So just as a reminder, there were a bunch of people who dropped out of city council to run for mayor. So there was a chance for a lot of new people to come on. But some of the races were exciting. Some of them were not so exciting. Philadelphia has 17 city council seats. And about half of those at this point, there was no challenger. The candidate who won the primary was just running unopposed. Um, So that means in eight of the district council races, there was only one name on the ballot. That was the person who won the Democratic primary back in May. So last night, there were no surprises in the first, second, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth districts. So that's a lot of them. We already knew who the winner was going to be. But there were two district council seats that cover specific parts of the city where there were challengers. So I'll take the third district first. That is a district that covers parts of West and Southwest Philly. Uh, There is a Democratic incumbent there, Jamie Gautier. She was facing a challenge from a third party candidate named Jabari Jones, who ran under a party he himself created called West is Best. Um, NBC 10 reported that he may have had, there may have been some shenanigans yesterday. They Uh, found some fraudulent flyers who said Jabari Jones was the Democratic candidate, not Gautier. So Mm. the district attorney's office said they're investigating that. But no matter what, Jamie Gautier held him off. She won re-election for another term on city council. A Democrat will continue to hold that seat. And then in the 10th district, which is way up in far northeast Philly, there's one Republican who's a district council member currently. His name's Brian O'Neill. And he also overcame a challenge from a Democrat. He was running against a guy named Gary Messino, who was the head of the Sheet Metal Workers Union. And the thing about O'Neill, you know, like we said, Democrats really overrepresent in Philadelphia, but they keep electing Brian O'Neill. He's been in this seat. This will be his 12th four year term. Oh, wow. Do that math. It's been like since 1980, basically. So they like him, um, but they sent him back. Yeah, they sent him back. He's going to keep representing the 10th district. The Democrat did not take him down. And in our election guide episode, Inquirer reporter Sean Collins Walsh mentioned, you know, voter registration also skews Democrat up there. So Mm. Brian O'Neill, the incumbent, just gets people enough people to kind of split their ticket. They'll vote for a Republican. They'll vote for him. But maybe they are registered Democrat and otherwise might vote Democrat in the city. Okay, that is so interesting. What about the city council at large seats because I know that was that was a big deal. Those were a little bit more dynamic, you could say. So for those seats which represent the whole city, the whole city votes for these seven city council at large positions. There are seven seats and there were nine candidates total. So again, some of those seats were seen as kind of safe. The five Democrats who won their primary all the way back earlier this year, um, they have all won now. So that's incumbents, Isaiah Thomas, Catherine Gilmore Richardson, and Jim Harity. So they're all going back to council. And then there's two new Democratic faces, Rue Landau, who will be the first openly LGBTQ city council member, um, and Nina Ahmad will be the first South Asian council member. So that's five of the seats all went to Democrats. But the other two seats are reserved specifically for a party that's not the majority party. Right. So you had kind of a little battle happening between the Republicans and the Working Families Party, which is sort of to the left of the Democrats. They were trying to take both of these seats. It is really early, so we don't actually have an official call in both of those races. But Kendra Brooks, who represents the Working Families Party, has been declared a winner for one seat. She'll be coming back to council. This is her second term. And the last seat, again, the Associated Press, the Inquirer haven't called it, 
But the other Working Families Party candidate, Nicholas O'Rourke, did declare victory on his social media accounts. He has about 62,000 votes compared to the next place person who is a Republican named Jim Hasher, who has between 57,000 and 58,000. So he's up. Close. Yeah, it's 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 mm-hmm. really close. These these races, the splits aren't very big, but he's up. And, you know, if his if his declaration wasn't premature, this was a good night for the Working Families Party and not a good night for Republicans on city council. Let's look at some other city races. Abby, who won in the city's commissioner's race? So a lot of these more city administrator type races weren't super competitive. Again, you know, the real competition was in the primary. But the city commissioners who they oversee voter registration and elections in Philly, there were only three people running for three seats. So Democrat Lisa Dealey and Omar Sabir and then Republican Seth Bluestein won. For city controller, which is the chief auditor of the city and the school district, it's, it's like kind of a watchdog position. Democrat Christy Brady won the seat. And then John Sabatina is the new register of wills. He beat incumbent Tracy Gordon in the primary. Um, this row office is responsible for granting wills and maintaining various records ab- around wills and inheritance all throughout the city. Now, Rochelle Bilal was reelected as sheriff. This office runs security for the first judicial court, and she manages court ordered foreclosures and tax sales. And then there was a ballot question asking voters to amend the city charter to create a permanent office for people with disabilities. Generally speaking, ballot questions, they go yes. And that was true this year as well. Voters said yes. And before we wrap up, let's talk about the projected winners of some statewide judicial elections. Yeah. So when you went to the polls, if you went to the polls, you probably saw a lot of judges on your ballot Yeah. yesterday. Um, but we're just going to talk about kind of those most important, highest courts in the state. Democrats did well, pretty, pretty well across the board. So if we look at, for example, the Supreme Court. You know, that's the highest court in Pennsylvania. They decide huge things like sometimes, you know, what our voting districts look like or they they make big consequential decisions in states across the U.S. on hot button issues like abortion. Um, there is one seat up on that court. It's got a 4-2 Democratic majority. And the winner was the Democratic candidate. His name is Daniel McCaffrey. He's a former Philadelphia prosecutor. He sits currently on a different appellate court. Uh, This was a really big deal race. More than $17 million was spent on ads and attack ads and things like that, according to the Associated Press. So you may have been seeing those ads. And what it boiled down to is Democrats now have a slightly bigger majority on this highest court in the Commonwealth. They have a five to two Democratic majority because McCaffrey beat the Republican Carolyn Carluccio. And a couple of the lower appellate court races, Democrats, again, appear to be doing well. Uh, There's a race for the judge of the Superior Court that had two seats up. The winner so far here is Jill Beck, who is a Democrat. Uh, Again, there are two seats, so there's one more race. Still has to be called at this really early hour in the morning. Mm -hmm. But Democrat Tamika Lane is currently ahead for that second seat. She's ahead of Republicans Maria Batista and Harry Smale. And then for this last appellate court, I'm going to talk about the judge of the Commonwealth Court which has nine seats total. There is one vacancy. The winner has been declared. It is a Democrat, Matt Wolf. So again, Democrats appear to have done really well in these big statewide elections. If you want to know more about common pleas and municipal courts, these are our city courts. We'll have a link to election results in our show notes. Awesome. All right, Laura and Abby, thank you so much for joining me at this early, early morning. <laughs> so early. It's time for more coffee. <laughs> All right. But we ha- we've we got the results and we've got a new mayor. So hopefully uh, Parker will come back on the show. Fingers crossed. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode about the election results, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, 
to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.